Well, that's where it just kind of cut off. It says, P.S. My complete game win was against the White Sox. So I guess that he pitched a complete game. I asked about it. He probably had one in his career. So I was curious. So I don't know why that cut off. My battery's still got 20%. I don't know if I'm using up all my memory, which could put a damper on things, so then i got to load it all. So we'll keep going. If it shuts off again, then I might just stop this video there and start a new one after I charge and figure out what the heck is wrong with my camera. Next one is Tim Garfinvold, former, former Red Sox pitcher, beat up 95 Fleer. 95 score, a 95 Donruss rated rookie, and a Pawtucket Red Sox card stained. So again, I found that this former Red Sox signed through the mail, and I thought, why not add some more Red Sox to my collection? It's my main collection, it's the team I like most. They're finally waking up, they're over 500 for the first time this year. It's nice to see, because they're a lot more talented than they've been playing. Orlando Merced. This one I sent before uh, the hurricane that destroyed Puerto Rico, so I assume these were lost. So he signed a 6, 91 score, a 97 Fleer. So these are older than when I was hoarding. These are from the summer of four. A 92 total, 92 tops, and a 93 tops. Those, so Merced played a week or two for the Red Sox in about 97 or 98. So these technically are from my Red Sox collection. He had been a great signer, and then the hurricane hit, and then I never heard back, and he really stopped signing. So that's really awesome to get him. I was not expecting that. Um, I used to collect the 97 Fleer set, and then I sold a bunch off, and now I'm kind of regretting that. So when I can, I send the 97 Fleer out. Two more. One that was barely sealed from 319, and it's Louis Alisea. He played one year for the Sox. He was awesome. I loved him. Um, again, he's a variable signer, so this was kind of a, I hope he signs. He signed a nice Ultra Red Sox card. The 01 Tops, which I'm kind of a sucker for. 97 Fleer Series 2, which I didn't particularly collect, but they're, I like them because there's no gloss. They come on easy, and then just an extra common that I had. So I'm really psyched about the Red Sox and the 92 Tops. I've never sent to him before. It's awesome that it came back because he's not... A short sure thing. He's a decent signer at times, but he's not a short sure thing. And the last one before I take a break, try to recharge everything, is from 3 3 18. It is Dusty Baker. So he, when I first started sending, he was signing through a cable company. He has long since stopped and it's been RTS. I was quick to get this out which is nice. It's another 1974 Topps card. Add it to the collection. Sick. I'm glad this came back. I don't have a Dusty Baker. I didn't until right this second. So that's my second true 1974 Topps. Fourth overall because I've gotten two checklists back today. And that is another, again, at the time it wasn't quite a long shot, but seeing how he stopped signing is one that I was really hoping was in here. So, so far so good. That's four stacks. My battery's dying. I gotta check my memory. I'm gonna take a short break. As soon as I can, I'll start the next one. It's kind of torture that I have to stop for a bit. But if you lasted this long, thank you. And here comes the next stack. All right, back with stack number four. Actually, I forgot to get a cut, drink of coffee. We're gonna keep rolling. Um, you know, in reviewing how I've done, I, I don't know how I can be any quicker. Sorry if these are too long. Sorry if it busts you out. If you really need to wait, I will do like a quick review video as a separate video, just kind of highlighting some of the stuff. I'll have my stacks organized. But if you like looking at the reveals, I'm trying to make it fun. So 4518, I pulled out a 77 Tops rookie card of Randy Lurch. And he only signed one of, I think I sent four. So I lost some cards there. No big deal. The 77 rookie is what I wanted. That came out really nice. You can see his autograph. Blue Sharpie. So another for the 77 set. Didn't sign the 80 tops. So again, it's something I had. I have a lot more cards of him from my estate sale. Maybe I'll send them out. I'll see what's going on. Maybe he's a one per. So I don't know if I'll send him again. Four, five. 
Randy Lurch was, I believe, on one of the Phillies um, World Series or playoff teams. So Tim Stoddard. I sent to him a bunch of cards. He's a guy that I had a ton of cards of. Had never sent to him, so it's someone who I wanted to send to new. He was on the 83 World Series champion Orioles. So for me, he signed an 88 tops, a little bit smudged. 87 tops for that small collection I have going. 81 tops Yankees. I mean, Yankees. Yeah, that's clearly the Yankees. Can you tell that I've opened a lot of stuff? And an 84 tops with the Orioles. So... My two 80 sets are the 84 and 87 tops. I like the 84 more than the 87. I think they're more attractive. Um, and the reason why I collect 84 is when I was a kid, my father bought me a box of 84, so I had a ton of them, so I just started sending them off. Um, it's mostly a numbers game. With the state sale purchase, I had a bunch of 83s. I really like that set, so if I get a bunch back in this break, maybe I'll start collecting that one too. Um, the one set from the 80s I really don't like is the 82. And 80. I've already said how much I dislike that. All right, next one up. Rob Dressler. Did not sign the index cards. This was for 77, so he signed a 77 and an 80 tops for me. Both came out nice. 80 tops is a little bubbled. You'll see that a lot. There's something with whatever kind of gloss they put on there. It doesn't feel like there's a lot, but it bubbles a lot of signatures. But I don't care enough to really try to prep them with baby powder. So I get what I get with the 80, but the 77 tops is really nice. Doing really well with that so far today. Should be adding a good number to that binder. Another one from April. So I think we got past the oldest, now we're in April, and we'll start probably going forward in time. Ooh, another 74 tops checklist. I do not know who that is. Don Hahn, maybe? Seems to be checked off. Nope. Fred Bean. So the 77, a new seven, uh, 74, a new one. Fred Bean also signed the 73. Is that a high number? Yep, 573 high number. I think I already had that one, but I did not have the 75. So again, trying to get more 70s cards signed, focusing on 75 in addition to my favorites, 73, 74, 77. I know there's a football collector, double X on SCN who has most every football card signed from the 70s so the thought of getting as many 70 tops cards signed baseball kind of comes from him he's a good friend I try to meet him at Fenway Park every year um, he's a really knowledgeable collector he's helped me in a new in a, a number of ways and how to write letters who to focus on here's another vintage one Jim Duffalo so he was on I believe the 62 Giants World Series team he signed for me a 65 tops, a TCMA of the 60s, and I guess I had two TCMA in the 60s. One on the Reds, one on the Giants. I thought that I had another vintage card. I'll have to go back and check. Either way, the 65 came out beautifully. And this one from Sport Lots isn't so beat up. The corners are obviously dinged, but otherwise this presents really nicely. And the 65 set has grown on me. A lot of those mid-60s sets for a while I wasn't too excited about. But I like the little flag with the names. Actually, most of those sets have grown on me since I've been sending more out. So here's one that I sent that I was kind of excited to get. Don Bosch. So he signed his index card. 69 tops. Expos. So again, the Expos cards of the 60s and 70s, 69 and 70s are pretty attractive to me. I don't remember sending doubles of this, so that could be an addition. But what I really liked sending was the 68 Mets card. Like I said before, I'm a sucker for the 60s Mets cards. And even the 70s and 80s are kind of attractive to me. I think I just like the color. You know, if I'm looking at the Expos and the Mets, it could just be I just like how blue presents itself on a card. Who knows? So that's a really nice. I remember setting that and hoping getting it back. I think it's a 500, 572. So that's either high or set, semi-high. I think I paid 40 cents for this card on Sport Lots. Very, very nice. Another Met. Another Met Vintage, um, which I've got a pretty decent collection of. Not not huge, not all. But anytime I see it, I'm usually putting that on my radar of something to pick up. Next up is Ty Klein. So I've gotten him before, but I've come across Milwaukee Brewers, so I had to send it. 64 Milwaukee and 66. And I believe with him... 
I sent his 62 tops rookie on this because I can see it on my list that I got from the estate sale and voila, it's not there. That's kind of disappointing because a 62 is not an easy card to replace. There's some wear on this, but I guess I know that he does tend to keep a card or two. I sent to him a year after this, I sent to him I think six weeks ago. Um, and I do remember seeing that sometimes he did keep cards. So that is a disappointment. What he did sign is very nice. Those are nice additions. Wish I had gotten the 62 tops. But again, it came from an estate sale, which I've sold a bunch of cards. So I technically have made money off of that. So in the end, it's just the loss of a card, not of money. And from that estate sale, I have tons and tons of Hall of Fame lots of just base. I'll sell for four cents a card. If anyone's interested, let me know. I have them listed on eBay, but off of eBay, I will beat that price. So Ray Crone was a former Brave. I think he was on the 50 teams. Archive came out super nice. He signed an index card too, but that is a really nice signature. Really pops on that yellow background. That is super cool. So Milwaukee Brave, former uh, player who played in one of their World Series teams. Kind of meets all those the criteria of those 50s and 60s cards I like. Next up, holy cow, we're already at seven minutes in this video. Now when I'm talking about this, I, I, I want to mention that I have three main um, people that I kind of look up to in the, the YouTube world. Uh, obviously Eric Jabs is what got me into wanting to do a video. Um, also got me back into cards, so I'm starting to collect cards a little bit more. Chris Devar, hello! Um, I like what he does, he seems down to earth. Um, and I really enjoy watching his videos. And then Up North Collectors, I love their breaks. Gives me a little idea on, hey, do I wanna get that box? Um, they were the inspirations for this, so me trying to talk through it is a lot of what they do. I'm not as personable as they am, but I'm working on it. Um, so hopefully this is a little bit entertaining. I'm trying to give you a, a view of what I think when I go through my collecting. And here's Bob Meyer. Signed two index cards. Pen kind of skipped on this. I guess it feels a little glossy on the 65. So, Kansas City Athletics and Brewers. So he signed that Bob Meyer and this Robert Meyer. I guess he was trying to copy his original signature. No problem there, just kind of interesting. My letter came back. There's a short note at the bottom. It says, best wishes, sincerely, Bob Meyer. Thanks, Mr. Meyer. I'm having a great day today. Little did you know that when you signed this, I would open it a year later. I believe Big Bob Meyer's still signing, so pick up some. Maybe your 65 will come out a little bit better than that. Maybe check to see if there's a little gloss on it. Maybe his pen was bad, I don't know. All right, this one I can't get into, so I'm just gonna uh, need to keep the date because I have to put it into SEM. If you don't belong to SEN and you're into TTM, I suggest that it's worth the $15 a year. You'll get so much more value out of it. It tracks your stuff, it tells you, it gets you the addresses. So here's Mickey Stanley on the 77 and the 75. So 77 was for my set, 75 is for building. He can take a while. For me, I guess this only took about two months from when I sent it. He's pretty high up on my list of when I sent. Um, two very nice cards. I'm starting to already lose battery power in this, so I might have to stop. That kind of sucks. Oh, well, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll take a break in that. So that's two cards. 77. Still building that set. Very nice. Um, I have some more to send to him, but I haven't yet. They're just kind of sitting downstairs. Um, at some point I will get those out, knowing that it might take a while to get back. April, uh, so this was one, Carlos Rodriguez, so former Red Sox. I had a bunch of commons. Uh, my friend gave me a bunch of his old cards, so I had them, so I sent out just, I love sending out former Red Sox if they sign. I didn't know he signed beforehand. Here's a Red Sox card. I think I only had a minor league card. Um, all personalized. I may try to take the personalization off the Red Sox one, just to make it a little bit more clear. Another Red Sox. Another Red Sox and his Pawtucket card. So all very good additions. I was remember it being excited to send to him just because I had one autograph of his that I bought at a show from Mainline Collectibles for 70 cents, but I wanted to get my own. I 
I prefer to get them in the mail versus buying, so that was nice. I'm glad that it came through. I think he owns a batting cage or a, a training complex. Kevin Romine, so I like sending Romine cards. I have a billion of them. Most people do who collect back then. For a long time, he didn't sign, but he's been signing the last few years. So he signed a bunch of Red Sox cards for me, it looks like. 91 tops, 88 Fleer, 89 upper deck, 90 tops traded, and a rookie card, 87 tops. I don't know if I had that 87. Another Red Sox player. I already had him, but again, this was kind of like, I have tons of commons. I'd rather have signed commons than just commons sitting. So I wrote to him. Um, I do have a letter written out to him. I haven't mailed it yet because I have, again, 30 or 40 commons, and I will not send all 30 or 40 at once. But if I send to him once a year, I can get them done. I don't do it to sell. I just do it to have. Nice. So next one up is Mike Easler. He's been off and on lately. He used to be great. Then he looks like he took a break or got tired of it. So this one's great because it's an 84 traded card. This, I believe, came out of the estate sale purchase that I made. And he signed an 86, an 87, and an 84. I also included a beat up 78 rookie, which it looks like he kept, which is fine. It was beat up. And if he likes a beat up card, by all means. Um, the one I really wanted was the 84 Red Sox traded card. So that came out really nice. Um, that's my favorite from that. Nice. I'm glad I got that. He's still off and on. He signs and then he doesn't sign. Um, he was a great hitter during his time in Boston. I think it was only one or two years. He hit well for the Yankees before that or after that. I don't know. All right. Next one up, Steve Psycho Lions. So I sent this knowing it might take a while. 86 tops, 92 tops Red Sox, 92 score Red Sox, and the one that I sent them for, which is so awesome to have, the 85 Donruss rated rookie. So I had been looking on this for sport lots for a while, but none of the sellers I used had it. So finally I was able to get a hold of it, I had delayed sending it out, and then finally when I was knowing that it didn't matter how long it took because I'd be opening it in a long time. I sent it out, and that's awesome to get. I'm glad I got that. That will be the top of my Red Sox collection in terms of Steve Lyons cards. All were Red Sox cards that he signed. Uh, I had sent to him previously. I think I got his 87, but wanted some of the Red Sox. More comments. Oh, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. I'll probably take a break after this, charge the phone. This is going to be an all-day affair, guys, so... Hopefully I can get the video out to you tonight. We will see. So the next one are some vintage cards. Andy Echebaron. So I've been set, so he signed this side, Daryl Knowles. He's another great TTMer. I have been not, I've been saving to send a Daryl Knowles in anticipation of this card. So this will be going out in the next week to get it double signed. Let's see what else I got. So he signed his 68 tops card as well. And his 72 tops card. This came from that estate sale purchase. I think I already have this one signed. I don't have the 68 signed, and this is the first rookie I pulled down. So that's really nice. So off to Daryl Knowles in the next week. So you can look forward to that in one of my future mailbags. I might do a thing in like TTM Tuesdays where I'll save all my crests for a week and then open them all up on Tuesday. So that's as I get scheduled. I don't know that I have enough content fill a whole week so I don't know if I want to do just one day we'll see so this is a player called Carl called Carl Boulden sign one index card two index cards and a really nice 64 tops Sanders card that came out really nice the the condition on this card except for the front wear is really outstanding you'd think this was a reprint 518 that's what high number or semi high Looks like he included a note on his stationery. Alan, it is good is good to hear from you. I did pitch in Fenway. It was only in relief. I can't really remember, but I don't think I got a decision that day. At least it wasn't a loss. The Senators lost 100 games a year for a few years as an expansion team in 1961. You mentioned the NCAA basketball team, but did you know I played my sophomore and junior years with Oscar Robertson? I'm, I'm sure it's a shame we didn't win in those years. We should have. Take care, Carl. P.S. 
Okay, everybody, back with stack five. That was about a half hour delay. Um, I was running out of memory, my phone was dying, so now I've uploaded the previous videos. I have the phone plugged in, um, and then what I went ahead and did is I opened all the envelopes, advanced the video to try to save time, because I feel like we're getting long. Um, I'm probably already at an hour of filming, and I'm maybe a quarter of the way done, so. I did that not to look, I didn't look at any, but just to speed it up, so. Here we go with the next stack. I think this is stack five. 438 team brought in John Flaherty, former Red Sox. So we signed MLB Showdown. These are nice cards to get signed. They're colorful. They're not glossy. Uh, 94 tops Red Sox card. So again, I was going after the Red Sox stuff. Donner's the Rookies Red Sox. That's smudged. That's kind of unfortunate. And another smudge on the 92 tops traded, which is the one I wanted. Not great condition. That's a little disappointing. Um, kind of weird that they're on both of them. But a couple of nice autographs out of that too. I'll take it. More for the Red Sox. For 3018, brought in my letter. Or a letter or a note. Wrapped up with. Former Yankee Hector Lopez. So there's a nice 64 tops. Move the letter to the side. Right there, 64 tops has a little bit of bend. A 63 tops. A 59 tops with the A's. A little wear on the side. That's all right. And a 66 tops. So that looks like it's four of four. Can't imagine that I had any more that I decided not to sign. He ripped off the bottom of my letter and said nothing. So perhaps just to help protect the cards. I'm just going to recycle pile. Thanks to Mr. Lopez. I have had him before, but again, every every couple of years I try to send players that I already have just to send to him. Give me something to do. All right, from 6118, we have Casey Cox, former Senators pitcher. Um, I have sent to him before. I don't think I have the 69 yet, so it's a nice Senators card. The 67 may be a first as well. The 62, the Senators hat, but photo taken does seem like the Rangers, number 231. And then this is the first time I sent the 71. I love the inaction. 71 was the first year you had in action cards, um, so I thought that was a really cool card. Uh, I've been trying to get as many of those to send out or sent out as I can. Um, signature's a little faded on it, not as easy to see, but it's overall a really nice card. That's probably my favorite of the Casey Cox cards that I've seen out of any year. Glad to have it signed. Next one, six four, Dan Plesak. So he was a closer for the Brewers, a former All-Star. He signs very willingly through MLB Network. Um, so for the last couple of years, I think I've sent to him once each. I haven't yet this year. Um, being in the junk wax era, he has tons of cards. Some 87 Donruss rookie card of his. 92 tops on a dark card, but I like getting the tops card signed. I love the ultra photos. This came out super nice. And then, of course, he was on 2001 tops. Another sucker set. So he signed all five for me. That's five, right? Yep. So nice. I have him. But this was my, I guess, semi-annual or annual mail-off to get some commons signed. Very nice. Uh, added that to a couple of the collections I have. 6718 brought in a wrapped group of cards. From none other than Don Buford. So 73, this came from that estate sale that I had purchased, so now we're starting to get into that. My letter, no additions to it. So, I'll keep that just to the side in general. Don Buford signed a 73, a 71, which I hadn't had previously, a 68 tops, and then this I picked up from Sports Lots, um, a World Series card with John Bench in the background. Huge swing by Buford. Nice to get that signed. I think these cards, when they release them, are pretty cool. Just, you know, commemorating a specific moment. Um, they're not high number or anything, but I think they're kind of neat. 
So that's nice. I've been holding out and sending to Pete Ward because I wasn't sure. I remember I sent to Buford that him and Pete Ward have a co-card together, a card with both of them. So I wanted to wait till I opened this to send to Pete Ward or not in case I had that card to double up, but I don't. I don't think I sent it, so I'll be sending to Pete Ward soon. June 8th of last year brought in Tommy Helms. So I already saw his unsigned, his Dick Simpson rookie card. So I sent to him right after that without thinking ahead. Um, so then I haven't sent since. So I'll be sending him again with that rookie card. But he signed a 75. A 71. Nice, so I don't have this one yet. A 72, which I don't have. 204. And a 77. Nice airbrushing job on that A's hat. Looks pretty terrible and awesome at the same time. So that's for the 77 set. My building or growing 75, and then my growing 72. So, four nice 70s cards. Tommy Helms played for the Red Sox in 1977, so it falls in that collection, as well as a former rookie of the year. June 18th, this is right around my last day of school last year. I'm a teacher, I teach special education. Um, so, that's always a success. So, here I see Ken McKenzie. He's someone who I'm prepped to send out soon. I have another couple cards. So here's a 62 Mets card. That signature, if you can see, did not come out very well. So I think I have another 62 that I'll have to check. And it did not come out very well on the 64. So not the greatest signatures because you can barely see them. I don't know what happened. His index cards came out really nice. So I will have to send to him again. Maybe the cards need a little bit of prepping. Maybe it's the marker was dying. We'll try again, see if we get another bad result. And then we'll just talk it up to unfortunate circumstances. 6-8. And this one is former Red Sox manager Jimmy Williams. So I used to have this 87 Tops card that I got signed in person. I think I traded or sold it a long time ago. Um, so I sent that back off. And then I had a couple of his Astros cards that I sent. I like Jimmy Williams as a manager. I thought he was... All right, he wasn't great. Um, he inherited a club that was not built to get along or work together. He had some superstars on that team that didn't really play by the rules all the time. So he had a difficult time. I think he did well for what he had. Um, it was kind of tough for him when he got players who were at the end of their year, their careers, like Dante Bichette and Mike Lansing, who thought they were everyday players, but they weren't still everyday players. So when he tried to platoon them, they got upset. And then he got fired in 2001. Next up is a state sale send, Gail Goodrich. He's an NBA Hall of Famer. Previously, I had sent to him and gotten him on an index card. So when I found this in the state sale, 100,000 cards, I got that out to him right away. So that's a really nice addition to the NBA Hall of Fame collection. Um, it is on a 7980 Tops card. Looks really cool. Glad to add that. He's the one that every time I look at the list, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember sending to him. Going back a little bit earlier now, 4-5 gets us a hobby best friend, Jim Gosker. So he is great at signing. Um, he, he, he willingly signs. He says he enjoys it. He usually writes a note back. I probably won't go through the note this time. Um, but for me, he signed a 71 tops, the 66 tops Red Sox card, which I absolutely love, and I already have a copy of this. It's the kind of card that I don't mind having many copies of. Uh, Kansas City A is from 67. And a Pilots card from 69. I love Seattle Pilots cards. 69 and 70 tops. So, 404 from Jim Gosker. I don't remember if I sent to him again within this send. I may have. Because again, former Red Sox. Lots of yummy vintage, yummy vintage cards. Um... Always good to send to, you know, you got to return back, so I like to send to guys that I am pretty sure I'll get back. Thanks for asking, Ella. I enjoyed my time at Fenway. It was the best park, and the fans were really nice to me. Seattle was a different experience. The park was okay, old, and not made for, not made, and not was fun, and it was not fun to play in. So that was Seattle Six Stadium. No longer exists. I think it's a Lowe's hardware store now. Always interested in those old ballparks again. Just learning about baseball history. 4-3-18. 
think I'm doing better than one success per minute now, which should get us going. Not sure who that is, so we will see that it is Taylor Phillips, former Cub. He signed a nice 59 tops and a 60 tops for me, as well as one index card, two index cards. So that's really cool. I don't remember if he was on a World Series team, but this might have been where I was searching some vintage and saw that he was signing. Um, of note in this, you can see the Wrigley Field scoreboard in the background, kind of cool. I always like looking at the pictures. If there's anything interesting in the pictures, it kind of adds to the personal value I put in the card. Um, any neat picture it just kind of adds to the type of autograph. And he wrote a quick note. Thanks for thinking of me. God bless. Taylor Phillips. No problem, Mr. Phillips. I'm happy to think of old ball players. I like learning about history. I like learning about individual games, different teams who played on what. So it is my pleasure. Of course, you're not watching this, but that's okay. June of last year, John Kennedy, another one from Beyond the Grave. So he passed away several months after I sent this. He signed a 64 Senators card for me and a 73 Topps Red Sox, not high numbered. Um, I didn't have either of these cards. I didn't have that Red Sox card in my collection, so I wanted to add the Red Sox version. And I found a nice um, Senators card. Um, he was a great friend of the hobby. He was always willing to sign. Um, I have a number of different cards and index cards in my collection. Um, so I'm glad that I got a chance to send to him before he passed. Um, and, you know, I wish more former and current players were like John Kennedy and treated their fans as such. Uh, he was great to the hobby. And it was a sad loss for all of us when he passed on. Next up, this one seems kind of thick. Ronnie Gant. So he works for a new station down south. All of the cards, and I racked on him, so again, I apologize. These all came from the estate sale. Um, some inserts I thought were neat. I thought they'd look cool signs. So the Dominators insert from Donruss. Impact player score. 93 Flair, which I think is one of the most beautiful cards ever produced. I love the pictures on these. Um, if you prep them well, they sign really nicely. And then a couple of oh, Flair Lumber Company. And then a couple rookie cards. 88 Flair, not the update, okay. 88 Flair and 88 Score. So he signs very willingly through the news source. Um, really, you, you can't go wrong with sending again. He was on some of those great Braves teams. He's an excellent player. Um, he also tends to sign a ton. So he is one of the people where as long as he's working in that news in the public relations section, I wouldn't feel bad about sending four or five. Um, be fair, write a nice letter. Um, next up is Jim Colborn. So he can take a while. So I sent these out mostly. Sorry, to get the 77 card done. But then he signed a 71 card that I had, 75 card that I picked up, and then a 72 that I had from my estate sale. So those are really nice. I love adding the 77, of course. 71 is a nice addition. I don't know if that came from the estate sale or not. And 75, you know, I've gotten a small handful now out of this, so. I should have a good chunk of 75 to keep going with. Again, not one of the main sets, but something I want to build a little bit more of. Here's a big, thick one. We'll see who's in this. I got a note. I got an Albert Pujols packet, which is kind of confusing. I definitely did not send a Pujols, so that's not what it is. Bobby Malkmus. So he sent Greatest Thrill. I think that it's a religious packet. I don't throw them away, but it doesn't particularly interest me. There's a beautiful signed 1960 Topps card. Very smooth, decent condition, there's a crease. He signed an index card, second index card for me. I'll save the Albert Pujols thing. I'm not sure why he sent that. But cool and weird at the same time. And then it's a long note. So instead of reading it just to save times, I'll put it here. Feel free to pause it to read it. Um, I asked him about Fenway Park. I asked him about playing on the 57 Braves team. 
mentions. I see Warren Spahn, Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron. So he was a World Series send. Had played on those historic teams, so I wanted to get a letter out to him on a card. And another 60. So I'm just really getting a bunch of 1960 Tops cards, too. It's a, uh, that's a set that's grown on me. I didn't used to like the layout. I didn't like the horizontal design, but it has grown on me immensely in the last year or so. Something that after 59 Tops, I'd like to complete. Next up, Chris Cotteroli. So this was part of state sales send, part get rid of my common send. Nice 86. I like the 80s tops card sign. Here's an 84 for my collection. And 87, I believe it's a, oh, it is not as a regular. This looks like it would be a traded card though. And then 86 tops. I don't collect 86 tops, but I do collect these two guys. So those are two nice additions. Um, and then I figure any other additional tops cards I can get. So that was a send to get 84. They were all in my commons bin. Very nice. Again, I'd rather have these sitting here in this envelope signed than in a common box in my basement. March 5th. This is one of my earliest sends in this whole hoard was Charlie Hudson. He was on the 83 Phillies team who lost to the Orioles. And he has an 84 tops. And he had an 87 tops and then I added a couple more in there. He signed an 85 and an 86 Donruss. All very nice. Very glad to add them to my collection, especially being on a pennant winning team. Plus two more for those building 84 and 87 collections. Cool. I was wondering if I get him back. So he was the first that I sent, I think, when I started deciding that I wasn't going to open any. So he took what looks like about a month to get back. All right, so Rick Reichhart. He's variable through the mail. This is kind of a nice get. Um, this came from the estate sale, and then this from the, remember I said that I had bought almost a complete set in 1970, well I had doubles of this. What's interesting about this is it's number 720. It's the last card in that set, so I had doubles of this. I've been sitting around for a while and I decided what the heck, I could sell it for a dollar, maybe. It's not very great shape, or I could try to send it and I'd have a kind of neat card. So I'm really glad to get these back. Nice addition to the 1970 top set. I have a, probably about 100 of these signed and then adding a Vintage 66. Seems like even opening these isn't saving too much time. This will take about four minutes. Uh, I guess four minutes is decent. Next up is somebody that I can't read. So it is Dick Kalmus on a 68 Tops card. And I wonder if this is all I sent. It might have been. I might have had another card in there. Like if he had a 64. I'm not sure. So either I lost this. Oh, yep, he did. And I didn't lose it. It was just in the back. Good memory by me. And I'm glad it came in there. So two nice vintage cars. I love the 64. When I saw this on Facebook, I just, I thought it popped. I thought it was really cool. You know, showing the background in the stadium with warm-ups. Uh, as well as nice blue. It's got to be the blue. I got to love the blue cards. Because that Dodgers card was very attractive to me. So I guess... If you're going to be a 1960 card and you're going to have some decent blue on you, I'm going to think it's a cool looking card. Last one in stack five is John Stearns. So I didn't know about him or signing until I, in my estate sale, pulled the record breaker card. And because it's a unique little record breakers card, I'm interested in getting it signed. Also notice it's Mets, which aside from the Red Sox, I probably have more Mets cards than anything. Um, so let's see, he signed that. 77 tops for my set 81 tops the state sale is the first time I had 81 so we'll see how many I get this is a set I can see trying to start to sort of put together and like I said earlier 83 I think just pops to as much if not more than 84 so I think this is the first 83 I've gotten back and I see myself trying to send more and more of those out there will be a bunch in here as I get more into the state sale so there's stack five a couple really nice vintage, um, a couple 74s adding in. Um, I've now been at this for, I would guess, close to two hours. I am so far away from finishing. I'm going to turn this off, get the next stack ready, and then just jump right into it. Every It seems like every few videos I've got to stop and upload them in, into my computer to make space on my phone. Um, this is going to be an all-day thing. So... I'm also thinking that it might be multiple hour videos. I'm not going to make a video longer than an hour, so there might be part one, part two, part three, part 654,000. Who knows? Um, see you in a minute.